Hey guys, welcome back to the series where we learn how to use Niagara in Unreal Engine by making this Niagara Falls. Now by the length of my hair, you can probably tell it's been a long time since our last episode, but I'm back now and in this episode today, we're gonna focus on the splashes. And more specifically, I'm gonna teach you how to control timing with the input from Curve. Let's get started. Okay, so here's what we have made so far in this series. We already made the main part of the waterfall and hopefully you've done the homework and added these little white stripes of reflection to the waterfall. And for today, we're gonna work on the splashes. So again, we're gonna duplicate another same emitter because they're pretty similar in the size and setup. We're gonna rename this to splashes. So to rename a emitter, you could double click here on the emitter or you could press F2, which does the same thing. We're gonna click on the isolation here so we know what we're working with. For now, for this emitter, we're gonna disable the gravity force. We're gonna disable soft force and velocity here because we don't need that. Scale and sprite size two for now. And we can take a look at what's happening here because we've set the emitter to spawn very high. So everything's high up there, but the splashes should happen down on the ground. So we're going to go into the initialized particle here and then just let the position offset back to zero. So now everything's at the ground level again. And now for the colors, because since they're splashes, it's usually more of a white color. So I'm gonna just desaturate every one of these a bit and then set a brighter value. Now I'm gonna set this to random uniform and set the size between 175 and 200. I want the splashes to be a bit wider than the main part of the waterfall. So how we do that is just increasing the box size here to, yeah, 1,700, looks good. Now for the sprite facing and alignment here, if we actually go into the sprite render, we can see the alignment here is set to velocity aligned. So for this emitter, I'm gonna use custom alignment, which just means it's gonna take the value that we set here to sprite alignment. I'm gonna align it on the Z axis. So now let me remove the floor here so we can see it better. This tab's called preview scene settings. And if you don't see it, you can go to windows and then just check the preview scene setting here. So you could turn on your environment or your floor. Now to make these square sprites to look like splashes, I wanted to grow on the Y direction of the sprite very fastly so it mimics how you know water bounces off the ground here. So we turn on the scale sprite size. I'm gonna unpin both of these and then click on the Y. So for the Y, I wanted to grow very tall and then slowly come down. This curve is basically what I want. So you can see, let me isolate this, that the sprites are growing tall and then coming down here. Now the movement is feeling pretty slow and that's because we have our lifetime set on a pretty big value. So let me put it down to 1 and 1 1.5. And it's also growing a bit too tall for the waterfall. And that's because we have a scale value down here which is set to 12 in our previous emitter. So let me just reset that first. And now it's a bit too short but what we can do here is type in make vector 2d which will separate it into two separate channels and this one will be one and i'm gonna add some randomness here i'm gonna maybe like five to ten it's also a bit too dense which means there's too many sprites here so we're gonna lower the spawn rate 15. Okay, and now the colors look kind of too desaturated, so I'm gonna drop the saturation back to one here. Or you could just play with the colors to your liking. And now here comes our first problem. Because when we scale a sprite, even though it's only on one axis, it scales on both directions. 
So you can see here the sprite actually grows up and down. But when we see our final product, we actually want the bottom to be a line on the ground. So it feels more like what we see in nature. And of course you can do some math to like offset half of the height of each square so it sits on the same horizon. But there's actually something I want to share. It's in Sprite Render and there's a default pivot in UV space. And that just means when we set a position for a sprite, that position is going to be applied on the pivot. And right now it's set to 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 means the pivot is in the center of each sprite. But in our case, we want the pivot to be on the bottom. So we actually just need to change the 0 0.5 component to one. And then now, since its pivot is on the bottom of each sprite, when we scale our sprite size like this, it will only go upwards, which is what we want. And now I feel like the X could also maybe slightly become wider because water spreads out. Maybe a, a bit too fast. So I'm gonna increase the lifetime again to 1.5 and two. And yeah, that's already we have the kind of punchy timing of the splashes and it's just from this really good curve shape actually these shapes here are all very commonly used in vfx and stuff it's a great starting point and then you can tweak it to your likings but something like this that you know scales up very fast at the beginning and then slowly just fades away and then it feels like energy just kind of fades off very naturally so now that we've done the scaling part, when we turn the isolation off, we can we can see it's kind of on the same plane as the main part. So our next step here is to make it moving forward from its original position, like our final result here. Now one way to do it is by adding a force or velocity like how we did with the previous main body. We used gravity force here to pull it down towards the negative Z direction. Here's a little useful tool tip. If you see there's a hamburger menu here, view options for every module you click on. And if you go in and check show parameter reads and show parameter writes, you can kind of get an idea of what each module is doing. So for example, this gravity force module, it writes to a parameter named physics force. And if you look at what's inside soft forces and velocity, you can see it reads this physics force and then it calculates the final position of this frame and basically just writes to the particle's position. And that's how we see something is moving, right? We see it by its position being changed. So naturally another way for splashes to move is we can just directly set the position to what we want. So how we do that is in particle update, we hit this plus sign, search for a module called set new or existing parameters directly. In our case, we're gonna set the parameter called position. So right now the position is directly set to the engine emitter simulation position, which in our case is basically just the zero zero point of our simulation. So you see every sprite now is all condensed into this point. So we already have a initial position here for each sprite and we want it to move forward on the X axis. So we're basically adding a value to the initial position. So we're gonna do some math here and just use the add vector to position. The initial position will be a parameter called initial position. Search for this, there's a namespace called initial. So maybe you wanna move it forward like 500, but you can see it's not moving in an animation. I'm directly setting it to be the initial position plus 500 units on the X axis. So what we're gonna do is use make vector so we can separate each channel since we're only gonna change the X component and then use a curve from float. When I think of animating values, my first option is always this float from curve module. Now I already know I wanted to move towards the X axis. So I should be in it increasing from zero to one. So I'm gonna use the linear ramp up curve and then right now it's not showing any animation yet because this value is just one, which means I'm only pushing it forward for one unit. 
So I'm going to scale this curve here. Of course, we're going to add some randomness. I'm going to set it between 500 and 600. And now everything is moving forward. But it feels kind of linear because our curve is linear. So here again, we're going to make some changes to the curve to give us the timing that we want. So now I'm just going to select both these breakpoints. I'm going to right click and select auto. So this is going to give us these handles for its motion. I want it to come up really fast at the start and then just slowly ease out. So at first we're going to make the curve like increases really fast and towards the end of his lifetime is going to slow down. So you can see it's already looking like what we want. That's pretty much it for the splashes, but I'm going to add a final touch. I'm going to duplicate the splashes isolate i'm gonna add a add velocity module here and i'm gonna add it with the from point option i'm gonna move the origin a bit below of the z and then i'm gonna in the sprite render i'm gonna change the alignment back to velocity align actually the velocity should be way below so what it's doing is since we're adding a velocity from a origin that's down below you can imagine maybe there's a point like right here from here connects to each sprite and then it's gonna push it and because we set the sprite render to velocity align we can make it spread out like this which adds a, another element instead of just like up and down like vertically and there we have it. We added some splashes to our waterfall. We learned about how curves is very useful to animate stuff and how all these modules is actually just changing a parameter. So why not just set it directly ourselves? So these are the two takeaways for this episode. In our next episode, we're gonna work on adding these water fogs, which is also a square, very stylized and also these ripples, which if you're an early subscriber, you may have seen my video on polar coordinates, which is exactly what we're gonna use to make these ripples. So as always, if you have any problems, please comment down in the comment section. If you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.